Winter has come early quite unexpectedly this year, which has left me scrambling trying to get ready as we bring in our new breeding ram. The last 24 hours here on the grass-fed homestead have been a little bit hectic. As you can see, we experienced a winter storm that came in last night. We're under a severe winter weather watch. We got about three in we got about three or four inches overnight and into this morning, which isn't terrible, but we're expecting another five inches to come tonight, which can start causing problems for our shelter situation given how we're not set up for winter yet. Yesterday afternoon I started putting this new corral together for the sheep. This area right here behind me is going to be the area for our breeding ewes and we're going to introduce the ram in there and this is where all that action is going to happen. They'll be in this corral into December when the breeding cycle is over. I built it off of where our garden area was and what was our winter chicken yard from last year. I used one of the cattle panel walls, if you will, from that to form this just to keep my costs down as much as possible. So it's a 32 by 32 enclosure. And again, our ewe lambs from this year will not be in here. I'll have to be sorting them out before introducing the ram. Blue, you don't have to stand out there, buddy. You can go under the shelter. So I just started working on this yesterday afternoon to receive the ram today. I thought I would have this all finished and I got a notice from Tess saying she had to come yesterday evening to drop off the ram because she couldn't, because with the winter storm coming she wasn't sure if she was going to be able to drive her trailer. I wanted to film putting up this area and showing you what we did with the cattle panels over here for the temporary shelter. but. It was such a frantic, desperate situation, I did not even have time to film it. I got this idea to make the shelter this way from one of our viewers, Richard. Basically what we have is a corral panel, which is 12 foot long. It's made out of steel on one side, and then another one on the other side. Originally this corral panel was connected to the other two and was serving as the back of the frame for this, but the 12 foot width of it was leaving was not allowing for enough arch on the cattle panel to hold any kind of snow load. A very slight arch on it, which would have likely collapsed with the snow coming in, and I didn't have an, and I did not have enough time to even start framing. Tess arrived a couple hours before dark. She helped me finish putting the corral together, getting this shelter up. We finished just at dark with that. Then I had to get the ewes over to here from pasture and get the ram from the trailer and we got him loaded into what was our original pig corral. To secure the cattle panels to the corral panel I'm using two inch hose clamps which is doing an excellent job of keeping this really firm on there. I do need to make a few adjustments to get this side of the tarp down further because our northern wind is coming right through there so that'll help give them a little wind break. And I do need to put up some kind of framing in here. I'm a little concerned with the five inches of snow coming overnight. But at least for right now, the girls are okay in here. They're happy, they're being well fed. But it was an absolutely miserable experience doing that last night into the dark. It was pouring rain and then that turned into a slushy sleet action that was going on. I was soaked to the bone. It wasn't fun. Then I came out here to the hay barn, formerly known as the carport this morning, to do morning chores. And there was a good dusting of snow on my hay, which is of course not good. If you see up there, I have it tarped off now, but that was just an open gable and snow is just pouring in from there. I got up on a ladder with the tarp and I screwed, I put screws through those wood strips to hold the tarp down so it wouldn't just shred in the wind and I'm hoping that it holds and unless we have some severe gusts it should be fine and we do still have a little bit of gap there but I don't think that's significant enough the snow would have to come in at a really odd angle for it to hit my hay from that little hole there the piglets are doing just fine they're actually just finishing their breakfast now even though it's after lunch they refused to come out of their shelter they were just huddled up in there and have finally decided to come out and eat at lunchtime Oh, my God.
The big piggy piggies are doing fine too. My only concern is we had a lot of accumulation on the electric fence this morning. I knocked off as much as I could of it, but it was sagging pretty good. So we have a definite possibility of them going walkabout at some point here if we get too much snow accumulation. Clara, are you enjoying your first snow? You don't mind? That's good. This is our loner breeding ram. He's a he's a young fellow. He's not full grown, but Tess has very high hopes for him. He checks a lot of the boxes for the qualities Tess is looking for in a breeding ram. Hey there, buddy. So this winter weather is supposed to clear out in a couple days, and we should have a thaw, hopefully. And at that point, I am going to introduce him to the ewes. Of course, I'm gonna get the ewe lambs out, and then I'll bring him over there. And then the festivities will begin. The chickens in the chickshaw are not really happy about this. Of course, we haven't gotten them into their winter housing situation. They're still out on pasture. This whole storm thing caught me completely off guard when I was trying to deal with sheep and just didn't have time to deal with chickens and pigs. We probably only have three, three and a half hours of daylight left. My friend David is coming over. He's gonna help me do something just to get that structure a little bit more secure so it can withstand the weather coming in tonight. We're just about out of light for today, but we got up a rough framing structure. It's gonna be able to hold, at least for tonight, it's gonna hold about five inches tonight. It's, this is not our long-term winter solution, but like I said, it's gonna get us through the night. Tomorrow when there's more light, we'll come back outside and take a closer look. I'll show you what we did and, and we'll be able to hopefully show you that it worked. The structure is still standing and despite getting several inches of snow overnight, there's really very, very little accumulation on the top of it. I am still getting snow in on the hay bales, which is definitely not good. I suspect it's coming in through that crack there between the roof and the framing there. All my other tarps are covered in snow right now, so I'm going to see if I can get up there, brush some of the snow off, and I'll have to go out and see if I can bring home a fresh tarp to put up there to cover the top of the hay. There is a lot more snow on top of those bales than I had thought. Not good. I'm gonna have to, definitely gonna have to get them cleared out and tarp that area up there well. Let me show you what we did to frame this last night and get it a little bit stronger to hold the snow load temporarily. We have two vertical four by four posts and then a two by six ridge beam going across there. Now, this is not dimensional lumber. This is rough cut, so the lumber is actually a two by six and actually four by four, not not one and a half by five and a half and three and a half by three and a half. So this is a bit stronger than normal lumber from Home Depot. So we screwed the two by six to the four by four. I did not have long enough bolts to go through the four by four. If I had notched the four by four, I could have bolted it through, but we were really racing against the clock and uh, notching it would have added a lot of time to the project. So we put these right under it to give it additional support so if the weight starts building up, the screws are gonna be a little bit stronger and less likely to shear off with a bunch more screws in the fixture there. 
We have a T-post driven into the ground right here, and then fencing wire wrapped around it on the top, and then again down at the bottom just to really stabilize this post. On the top, I hammered in a few fencing staples to secure the cattle panel to the post. I did the same on the other side back here, and then and back here on this post, this is the back side uh, of the structure, I have fencing staples pounded in all along the cattle panel securing this post to the cattle panels. We put the height of this beam so it was actually pushing up slightly on the cattle panels. So the cattle panels aren't going to be sinking down and meeting the beam. The beam is already making contact with it, making it pretty strong. In a couple days, the weather's supposed to clear up a little bit and I'm going to be bolting and adding more bracing to the 4x4s so we don't get any swaying or lateral moving. Uh, at this point, it's pretty solid as it is, but if we get a really, really heavy snowstorm, <laughs> we're, we're kind of experiencing one now, but this uh, is probably just a warm up for the year. If we get a really big one though, I want it to be able to hold, obviously. And I really did not think that the storm would be this bad. This is a lot for being just in the middle of the fall, this kind of early winter weather. But this is the life of homesteading. Never a dull moment. Mm -hmm.